All right, I got a quick tutorial for everyone today about how to sort with geometry nodes. So what do I mean by sorting? Well, if you want to act on different elements, it could be a vertex, an edge, a face, that kind of thing, in a specific order, then you'll need to sort. But why? Well, let's take a look. If we bring in a sample index and plug in this geometry, and let's actually sample a position. So we'll go to vector point, and that'll give us a position value out here. Let's bring up a point node, plug in that position, and that point will now join geometry and connect these two. Actually, to see this easier, let's do a mesh to points this way. And we'll increase this. And let's actually take this mat cap off. All right, so that's our active vertex that we're sampling, the index being index zero. If we come over here to the point cloud, we have all of these vertices. I think there's 507 vertices. Yeah, 508 rows in Suzanne. So the index is this number on the left, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So if we want to sample another index, we'll pull in a position field, plug that in. Okay, my mistake. That's our that's our zero index. That's the position of this value is this position. So now if we sample a different index, you can see how it's jumping all over the place. In fact, really quickly, if we were to take the domain size of this point cloud, plug it into the geometry and say, okay, the size of this point cloud, that's our point count. And then plug that into a math node that will ping pong back and forth between zero and the number of points in this point cloud. And then if we drive this by the scene time in say frames, now when we hit play, you can see exactly how this is iterating over all of the vertices and it's completely out of order. We can slow this down, of course. Uh, let's take this math node, Shift D, drag in, say, we'll multiply by 0.5, maybe 0.2, there. So that's our order. But what if we wanted to work with these indices for whatever reason, from bottom to top? Well, Blender has a sort elements node and what this is, it will reorder all of the vertices or whatever whatever element you want to work with. It could be edge, face, point, spline, etc. And if we put that sort elements in the middle here, now we need to specify the sort weight. And this is the most important piece. The sort weight is a value assigned to each element and Blender will rearrange each element according to that order. So if you have negative 100 to positive 100, then negative 100 is smallest, so it will be first up to 100. So it's ascending order from 0 to 100 or increasing. So what we can do to work with this monkey from bottom to top is we can specify the position and say if we separate out the z value and you can see that the first element that it selected is now at the very bottom of this monkey. So if we hit play and maybe we'll speed this up a bit you can see it working all the way from the bottom to the top. But it's like, it's bouncing across the mesh, right? It's going back and forth, back and forth, even though it's working from bottom to top. So what if we wanted to, for instance, work with these vertices from bottom to top, front to back? Well, to do that, it's super, super simple, actually. All you have to do is just combine these weights. So right now, you can imagine the value being negative 100 to 100, just to conceptualize it for the Z. We want that to have the most weight. That's the most important thing. Primarily, we're going from bottom to top. Secondarily, we'll go from front to back. And to express that with geometry nodes, we can take a math node and we'll take the Y value and we'll give it a smaller weight. So we'll multiply it by uh, 0.1. So now the value, instead of being the straight Y value, now it's multiplied. So it's not as important. Whereas Z, it has a weight of Z times one. Y will have a weight of Y times 0.1. So it's a much lower value. And then we can duplicate this math node and then add these two values together. And so now if we go to the first frame, go to the side view, now you can see that it's working bottom to top, and then the front to the back. But now that can lead to some really cool effects. 
if we were to bring in a delete geometry node, now it's just deleting everything. But we want to say, bring in a compare node and say, we want to delete everything that's greater than this index. And we need to say integer. So this value is greater than the index. Now, if we go to the very start, it's deleted all the geometry, except it will start to reveal each vertex as it works with it. But we couldn't do this in a orderly fashion if we if we just had if we didn't sort the elements. It's it's all over the place. But by sorting the elements, now we can get control of how geometry nodes is operating on our geometry. So if we wanted to, for example, slowly reveal the faces of a mesh, let's do some rearranging here first. We'll take this mesh to points. We'll add this after the sort to be only faces. And now maybe I'll change this mat cap so you can see it easier. And I'll mute this so that we're not adding that point. Now you can see that if we play back, we get those faces being revealed from bottom to top, front to back. If we wanted to reveal the full face, so from front to back, we just have to change the weights. In that case, we would want we would want the Y value to have a full weight of itself times one, and the Z value will multiply by 0.10 so that it has a smaller weight. Now we'll go back to the start of the animation. You can see here that the order has changed. Now we're working front to back, not just top to bottom. So now we start to get this cool effect where it's part wireframe and part filled in. So I hope that helps understand how to sort in geometry nodes. Again, the key here is just whatever kind of logic you plug in to the sort weight field. And if you want to combine different priorities, like top to bottom, front to back, left to right, it's just a combination of taking those values, giving them slightly different weights by dividing them by 0.1 or 0.01, and then adding them all together into one scalar value and plugging that field into the sort weight. And that way you can change the order and the logic of how Blender will operate on different elements within the mesh or within the components and within the domain in geometry nodes. All right, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to like the video and subscribe. We have lots of cool videos on the way as I continue to explore all things 3D in Blender, geometry nodes, Godot. So see you in the next one.